back inside Artesian Football now joined by assistant coach, the defensive coordinator, Brad Rose, here in his fourth year at Martinsville with head coach Fred Cutter. Coach, we appreciate you taking time to join us here today. Glad to be here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the team so far this season. Very close. It's 0-4. You've had to deal with a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. And on the defensive side, you haven't had maybe as many as what the offensive side has, but it was a huge one with Bo Shields going down. How has the team tried to adjust to life, I guess, without Bo out there? Well, we've had some good kids step up. Uh, Joe Moriarty has stepped up. His game moved from a defensive end uh, spot that he was comfortable with and did a real, real good job with this year. And we moved him back to linebacker. Uh, Brian Hills picked up his game a little bit, and uh, we've had uh, uh, Dallas Nunn that's playing a position he hasn't normally played. We moved him in the linebacker to try and make up for what Bo did in the inside, and uh, those kids have stepped up well and done a good job for us, and we continue uh, we expect them to do so in the future. What are some of the things maybe you've had to do or adjust wise defensively? You come in, you work all season uh, in the off season to get ready for what you want to do with the personnel you have and then you have some injuries, you have to shuffle some kids around. What are some of the things that you guys have had to do here in the last couple of weeks? Uh, try and keep things simple. Um, you know, the, the job as a coach is to, to put the kids in the right position to make a play and uh, make their job easier. And so uh, we've done that with, you know, trying, like I said, trying to help Joe out, putting another linebacker in the mix in the middle. Uh, that way he doesn't have to cover as much ground. Uh, brought, brought in, uh, put, put some safeties in some different spots uh, to give us more numbers in the box. Uh, against the run, uh, again trying to help out where where Bo would Bo was that player where if something was mixed messed up, you know he he was the white out. Right. He was the little stroke. He was the, the little racer out. Yeah. out there. Yeah. He raced it all up, and we were we were ready to play ball the next down. Well, we don't have that now, so we've had to get uh, you know do some things, tweak some things, put some guys in different positions to, to try and accommodate that. And I think we've done that so far. We just got to keep repping it, keeping it simple, and uh, do your job. I mean that's the theme of this week and all season really on defense. Everybody does their job, we'll be fine. Let's talk a little bit about the opponent this week coming up, the Franklin Grizzly Cubs. Last week you had a team ran some veer stuff. They had a quarterback that wasn't anticipated probably of playing, even though he had an injury. I don't know how much Coach West shared with you during the week. Probably not a whole lot no, coming no. in of whether he was going to play or not. But you have a different quarterback, maybe more of a running quarterback than a throwing quarterback. Right. This week coming in, uh, like – Coach Cutriff, uh, you'll hear later on in the interview, talks a little bit about their two players they have, uh, uh, Jake Moran, uh, Jake Hemrick as well, that come out. So um, what are we going to expect out of them coming up on Friday night offensively? Uh, right now their, their MO is they want to feed the Rock to 28, um, which is uh, Morant, and uh, he does a good job physical back. Uh, we've been fortunate enough not to have to see him the past three years. We saw him his freshman year, and he's been dinged up uh, the previous years since we've played him. Uh, besides his freshman year, so and he's a, he's a speedster. He's put on some weight. Uh, he's a track guy. Put weight on, and now they put him a fullback and and feed him the rock on a lot of belly, a lot of dive, uh, those types of things. Um, Hemrick is is a good quarterback. He's improved. He uh, like coach said, he likes to get out of the pocket. They do a lot of play action uh, off of their belly series, and uh, like to roll him out. And with rolling him out, gives him more time to throw the ball and locate those receivers. So we got to be quick in the secondary to recognize it, rally up, and and stick on those receivers and and obviously maintain, contain, and, and make sure everybody uh, fits up right on the run. If you look at them on scheme-wise of what you see out of them, formation to Center Grove guy that's over there, mm -hmm. can you compare them to somebody that maybe we've seen, or are they kind of a combination offensively what they like to run? Well, all, up front, they're, they're, they're a gap-down scheme, which means basically they want to they want to find a double team and run the ball to the double team and try and get leverage that way. Um, so far as up front wise, blocking scheme wise, they're not, not any different than what we've seen. Um, every team we've played so far has been a gap down scheme. Um, and so, you know, we worked a lot on our double teams and our down blocks and stuff like that and, and reading those blocks. Um, but as far as uh, scheme wise, anything different, not a whole lot different. Um, you know, they'll, they'll run a few extra plays here, a little different than what other teams do. But for defensively, it doesn't matter to us. We're going to fit it up the same way we fit up any other play. And, uh, you know, and, and keep keep it simple, like I said. But no, nothing nothing schematically is going to be any different. Like Coach said, they do a little option where the quarterback reads it, and you know, we saw that against Bloomington South, we saw that against uh, Decatur, and we saw that against uh, Terre Haute South. So nothing new there. Um, you know, Greenwood actually read the option, so um, I think we're ready to go, and you know, it shouldn't cause any problems for us. Just somebody doing their job, like you said, you do your job, and everything, you should be okay. Yeah, that's that's the with defense, and and that's what we preach every day. It takes one breakdown on defense for, for a play to go six points. And usually if you go back and watch the tape, it's usually on every score there's a breakdown of one person, at least one person, and they, they, they contribute to the score. And if you don't have a Bo Shields, Division I linebacker, or, 
or someone in the background that can make up for that, it's going to cost you six. Let's talk a little bit about what you guys are going to have to do defensively coming up on Friday night to try to contain Franklin. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, I think we've got a good game plan. Uh, we've kind of simplified things for the kids, um, conceptualized it to where they'll see the same look out of the same offense formation uh, all week long, all game long. Um, and like I said, we've had some big kids, some kids step up, uh, Joe and, and Brian and Jeremy Mills really played a heck of a game last week uh, up front. Zach Woods did, and you know they're seniors, so that's expected. I won't expect the same out of them next uh, this week. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really just going to do our job and, and really focus on what we can do, what we can do to, for our job, and with that will in turn carry over to stopping what Franklin does. As you look ahead, look forward, what are the things that you guys are going to have to do defensively, get better at as the season progresses, to be ready really when it starts counting when tournament time comes right. around? We'll just solidify the fundamentals. Uh, anytime you, anytime you, you, you deal with adversity in, in, any, in any athletic situation, that's something you always revert back to when you're, when you, when you're wondering, you're trying to find answers, and that's fundamentals. And, and that's something we're going to keep preaching and keep working on every week, and, and, and that's something that's never going to change. No matter what scheme they run offensively, if you take care of your fundamentals, it's going to take care of any scheme that they run. And so we're going to keep hammering the fundamentals and uh, keep after them that way, keep coaching them up, and... Uh, and hopefully the ball bounce our way. All right, Coach, we appreciate you taking time to join us. Good luck out there on Friday. All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate right. it. Artesian Head Coach Brad Rose here inside Artesian Football. We're going to take a break, bring Head Coach Fred Cutriff back in here and wrap it up when we return inside Artesian Football. Discover Artesian Outdoors, the Bass Pro Shop on State Road 37 next to 84 Lumber. Inside, you'll find a shop crammed full with all your hunting and fishing needs. Artesian Outdoors, the Bass Pro Shop, carries a full line of archery and hunting supplies of all types. And they have a giant selection of tackle, live bait, and fishing gear. And catalog ordering is also available every Monday. For all your hunting and fishing needs, stop by Artesian Outdoors, the Bass Pro Shop, on State Road 37, next to 84 Lumber, behind O'Neill Mulch. Shop at Keller's Office Supply at 159 North Main Street in Martinsville for all your school and office supply needs. When you come to Keller's, you'll find superstore prices with a hometown service. Keller's has a wide variety of supplies from paper clips to office furniture. They also have a large selection of printer cartridges to choose from. Keller's offers same-day delivery for all your office and janitorial needs. And if they don't have your supplies in stock, they can deliver it to you the next day. Keller's is a proud sponsor of the Martinsville community. Come to Keller's. We'll teach you like family. Five. Five dollar. Five dollar footlong. Five. Five dollar. Five dollar footlong. Five. Come into Martinsville Subway and enjoy a $5 foot long today. Back inside Artesian Football with the head coach, Fred Cutruff. And coach, we had just had uh, Coach Rosen here, and he's done a fantastic job in his time here uh, with you and the Artesian Football team. Well, he's got a great football background. He's uh, you know done a great job. The kids play hard for him. Uh, you know, we've you know you, you come in as a coach and you've got a game plan, and and when you lose your your prima donna, the the, the guys all over the field for you with Bo Shields, so uh, it's really quite a blow. But you know, it hasn't affected him. He's you know I thought he's done a good job changing our scheme up a little bit to adjust to our kids, and uh, you know that's you know that's what you get in here is is a young coach going to be a great head coach, and uh, getting some valuable experience. Let's talk a little bit about the contest coming up. It's homecoming. It's your alma mater. Franklin Grizzly Cubs will come to town, and this is a Franklin team that is unlike Franklin teams that we've seen in your tenure here. They're playing very good football right now. Uh, this is a good football team. They've got a couple of good, really good players. Their fullback, uh, Jake Moran, uh, is uh, number 28, is, is probably one, might be the best back we see this year. And then they've got a, uh, their quarterback is Jake Hemrick. They call it the Jake and Jake Show. Uh, he does a great job. This is, you know, really he's been a four-year starter, uh, and it, you know, he's. He, this is the class they've been shooting for that they think is going to be pretty good, and they have been. Uh, they lost a tough one last week, uh, so we've got things we got to do. We got to contain the quarterback. Uh, he's great at rolling out, throwing, and finding his targets. They do some good things with him, and we got to contain uh, the fullback. Now they got some other good kids that go with them, but if those other kids beat us, then you know, we our hats are off to them. So, but those are what we got to focus on. What are we going to see out of them on the offensive side of the ball? Well, I think they like, I don't really want to call it option, but you're going to see a lot of dive, uh, you know, and that quarterback will pull it like, you know, I call it the kind of a quarterback belly. Uh, they do a little wing tee stuff, what you see maybe from Center Grove, so they've, they've combined that a little bit with it. 
uh, and they really like to roll their quarterback out. Uh, they like to get him out, and uh, he's out. He can take off and run. Uh, he can find open targets. So our pass defense has gotten a lot better. So we've got a, we, the key to this game for us on defense is we've got to keep the quarterback in. We've got to tackle number 28, and we've got to find those receivers in routes. We can't let guys run wide open because he'll find them. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, defensive side of the ball. What are we going to see out of the Grizzly Cubs on Friday night on the defensive end? Well, I call it an angle slant 50 defense. Uh, uh, Brian Harbin, head coach, was at Center Grove, and that's, you know they've kind of taken what they do from them. Uh, they you know they fly around to the football. Uh, they've got again some good kids. Uh, I don't I didn't see a lot of not very many guys going both ways. A lot of seniors. I think there's nine seniors that start for them on defense. So uh, we have to execute. I think our offense. Uh, we've proven we can move the football. Uh, I think we can run it if we execute. Uh, and we got to have some kind of like last year, last, we, last week it started, we're going to have a couple more kids step up and catch the football. Uh, and I think they're going to try to do a lot of slanting to confuse us. Our line is, is fairly young, but you know now our line is in their fifth game. So those youngsters ought to be ready for some of this. And they're, they're not as big, you know, they got a big nose man, but they're not as big as some of the teams we have seen, but they're very quick. All right, Coach, appreciate you taking time to join us. It'll be homecoming coming up on Friday night as well. And uh, like we said, your alma mater, Franklin, coming to town also. So it should be a good night. I think it'll be a great game. All right, that's Artesian head coach Fred Cutcher here inside Artesian Football Martinsville. Friday night, it's homecoming. Get out there early as the Artesians get ready to battle the Franklin Grizzly Cubs. I'd like to thank the coach for coming in for the head coach, Fred Cutcher, along with Brad Rose, who joined us, and Carl Van Dievender, who produced it. I'm Eric Meyer. We'll see you again next time inside Artesian Football.